This equation is also not really very useful for constant velocity. Try to pause the video and figure out why this equation won't really help us much for constant velocity problems. Well, again, the problem is that the acceleration is zero. Well, since the acceleration is zero, this term here is just going to drop out. This term is just going to drop out because the acceleration is zero. And we're just, just left with v final squared equals the initial squared. But again, that should have been kind of obvious because we know that v final is the initial. This is not telling us anything that we didn't already know. We know that v final squared equals v initial squared because v final equals v initial. So this is, again, just telling us that the final velocity is going to equal the initial velocity, which we already knew anyway. So this is another equation that wouldn't really be very helpful to us for constant velocity. Um, and in particular, um, you might have expected that you could use this equation to find the displacement. This equation has the displacement, so you might think it would be helpful for finding displacement, but it isn't because the displacement term is just going to drop out because it's going to be multiplied by zero. So this equation turns out not to be useful for finding displacement because that term will be multiplied by zero and drop out. So again, uh, the bad news is that this equation is not useful, but the good news is we don't need it because we already have a good equation. We can just use distance equals rate times time. For constant velocity, you can just use this one distance equals rate times time um, equation. You don't need all the standard kinematics equations. So I'm just trying to convince you that constant velocity problems are actually different from normal constant acceleration problems. You can't usually just use the standard kinematics equations. Instead, you should just plug into distance equals rate times time. You've seen how these equations don't tell us anything we didn't already know. How about this equation? What happens to this equation when we have constant velocity? Try to pause the video and give that some thought. Well, remember that we don't really need separate symbols for the initial and final velocity anymore. We can just call both of them velocity. We can use the same symbol for the initial and the final velocity, since they're going to be the same as each other. Vx plus Vx is 2Vx, so we're just doing some simple algebra here. And a little bit more simple algebra, these 2's will cancel. And here's the equation that we end up with. Uh, but this is just our distance equals rate times time equation. We already knew that anyway. So again, the standard kinematics equation is not really um, too helpful. Uh, I guess you could use it, um, but why bother? Why not just go straight to the simple equation, distance equals rate times time? This should uh, make good sense to us here. Remember that this term here in parentheses, we've already discussed this um, a long time ago in these videos. We know that this term in parentheses is just telling you the average velocity. If you take the initial velocity and the final velocity, and you add them together and divide by two, uh, well, for constant acceleration, that just gives you the average velocity. So this is just saying that the distance equals the average velocity times the time. Distance equals average velocity times time. Uh, but in this case, there is only one velocity. So the average velocity is just that constant velocity. So uh, we shouldn't even have to go through all this algebra. In this case, we should know automatically that the average velocity is just going to be vx, our constant velocity go straight to this equation. Okay, so this equation just boils down to the simple distance equals rate times time. Try to work, what, work out what's going to happen uh, if we try to use this equation for a constant velocity problem. I hope you paused the video and gave that some, some thought. Well, we know that the initial velocity is just v sub x. There's no point specifying that it's the initial velocity because we only have one velocity anyway now. And this term is going to drop out, right? because the acceleration is zero. This term has acceleration of zero, so it's going to drop out. Oh, we just got the same distance equals rate times time equation again. This just boils down to distance equals rate times time now. 
So again, what I'm trying to convince you of is that for constant velocity problems, it doesn't make sense to treat a constant velocity problem uh, in terms of the standard kinematics equations. Some of the kinematics equations won't work, and the equations that do work are just going to give you this simple formula that you can just start with anyway. When you're doing constant velocity, you might as well just start with this simple formula over here. Um, and uh, if you know two of these variables, you can find the third one. Incidentally, this maybe will give us uh, a little bit more um, intuition to what this equation meant in the first place. Um, you can see that this first term over here, this tells you, notice that this equation is trying to figure out your displacement. This equation is kind of trying to figure out how far you're going to go, your displacement. Well, this first term tells you how far you would go if your velocity was constant. This first term tells you how far you would go if your velocity was constant. Distance equals rate times time. Uh, and then this extra term is the extra distance you go if, you are ex if you're speeding up. So if you're speeding up, um, we're going to add on something extra because your, um, your distance is not going to be based just on your initial velocity, but all, also on the extra speed that you, uh, that you picked up. Or on the other hand, maybe if you are decelerating, um, your displacement is going to be less than your, um, what the displacement would have been if you were going at a constant velocity. All right. Anyway, again, the main point I wanted to make is there's no point really using this equation for constant velocity because you can just go straight to distance equals rate times time. That's what this equation is going to boil down to anyway. Here's the final kinematics equation. We haven't really used this very much, uh, but I hope you can see that this equation is not going to be um, all that helpful to us either for kinematics, or it's not going to tell us anything that we couldn't get from here. Maybe pause for a second and ask, what, does, what happens to this equation when you have constant velocity? Well, is this going to give you this again? So instead of saying v final, we can just say v because there is no difference between v final and v initial when you have constant velocity. And then this term is going to drop out again because it has an acceleration of zero. And again, we got back to distance equals rate times time. Okay, so again, the moral is that you should not treat a constant velocity problem like other constant acceleration problems. The normal constant acceleration techniques don't kind of work that well for constant velocity. In any way, there's a much simpler way to deal with constant velocity. When your velocity is constant, you can just plug directly into our distance equals rate times time equation, or displacement equals velocity times time. Um, it doesn't help to really think in terms of the standard kinematics equations, um, because some of the standard kinematics equations are just going to give you the same distance equals rate times time. And we saw that some of the other standard kinematics equations um, um, just tell you what we already knew, which is that the velocity is not going to change. So again, the point is, if you're dealing with a constant velocity problem, don't try to use the standard kinematics equations. Just say to yourself, I can just say that with constant velocity, um, the displacement just equals the constant velocity times the time. Displacement equals rate times time. Again, this is worth being very clear about because this actually is a very important situation that comes up for any two-dimensional projectile motion problem. Anytime you're doing two-dimensional projectile motion, your horizontal velocity will be constant. And then you can say that your horizontal displacement equals your horizontal velocity times your time. Uh, so this is something that's going to be very important for problem solving purposes. So to summarize one more time, when you're dealing with a constant velocity problem, you don't treat that like a normal constant acceleration problem. Uh, what are the differences? Uh, well, the first difference is that you don't need to distinguish between the initial and the final velocity. It, with a constant velocity, the initial and the final velocity are the same. So you can just call them the velocity. Uh, and we know that for a constant velocity, your acceleration is going to be zero. That's really part of the definition of acceleration. Uh, and then most important, um, don't worry about the standard five kinematics equations. When you're dealing with constant velocity, we don't think in terms of the standard five kinematics equations. We can just use the very simple equation displacement equals velocity times time. That kind of means distance equals rate times time. And if you know any two of these variables, you can find uh, the third one, 
Notice that we're not actually going to use the acceleration to solve problems about velocity. Um, it's, it's helpful to notice that the acceleration is going to be zero here, but that doesn't plug in directly into this formula. Uh, so we're not actually going to plug that in uh, to this formula. Uh, so we need to have two of these variables in order to find the third one. Just knowing the acceleration is zero doesn't help us. Um, so we need to know two of these variables in order to find the third one. We're not going to plug the acceleration of zero directly into here because the um, there is no acceleration term in this simple equation. 